I'm back and now let's do our lesson quiz for lesson number six on light. So question number one, name a type of mechanical wave. All right, so that you could say earthquake waves. You could say ripples on a pond. Uh, you could also say sound waves traveling through air. So basically any kind of a wave that is propagated it is moved by matter. So as matter is going up and down or in and out, it's actually transporting the wave through it. Name a type of electromagnetic wave. So you could say radio waves or infrared or visible or ultraviolet or x-rays or gamma rays. So all of those are different types of electromagnetic waves. Uh, question number two. Waves A and B travel at the same speed. Wave A has a larger wavelength than wave B. How does the frequency of wave A compare to wave B? Now in order to solve this one, we need a formula that is going to relate velocity, because it says something about speed, and it's also going to have something that has a wavelength in it. So if you go back through your formulas, uh, there's really only one that's going to work. And so that's the one that says that speed is going to be equal to wavelength times frequency. And we know that wave A, so let's say, let's have a large lambda and then put an A subscript. So wavelength A is very big compared to wavelength B. Okay, so what would that mean about the frequency? So that would mean the frequency for A would have to be small and the frequency for B would have to be big. So if one letter is getting large, the other one gets small, in order to compensate and then vice versa. What happens to the frequency of a sound wave if its source is approaching you? This was called the blank effect. This was called the Doppler effect. Okay, so if it is approaching you, the frequency goes up, okay, and if it goes away from you, the frequency goes down. Number four, what is the difference between refraction and reflection? So it's going to be the bouncing of a, of a wave or the, the changing direction of a wave. With reflection, it's bouncing off of, and then with refraction, it's bending because it's going through something. Which of the following waves has the largest wavelength? Okay, remember this side over here has the largest wavelengths and then this side has the smallest. So it would be radio. Number six, which of the following waves has the greatest speed? This is a trick question because all of those are light waves and all light waves travel at what speed? The speed of light. So it's none of those. So all of them are traveling at the same speed, the speed of light. Number seven, if a light source becomes two times further away, what happens to its apparent brightness? It's going to be one half. Eh, no, that's not right. Okay, because what do you got to do? It's one over R squared, so it's 1 over 2 squared, which is going to be 4. So you're going to say that it gets 4 times dimmer, or you could say it's 1 fourth as bright as what it once was. Uh, what's the absolute coldest something can be in Kelvin? Well, they don't call it absolute zero for nothing. So absolute zero, zero on the Kelvin scale, is the absolute coldest something can be, and at that temperature, things would stop moving. 
because temperature was related to the kinetic motion of molecules. So as things get colder, they move slower and slower, kind of like you do on a very cold winter day. You're moving around slow because you're so cold. Molecules do the same thing. So they're moving slower, and then when you reach absolute zero, they would actually stop moving. Now, on a, uh, a molecular scale, though, on, when you're talking about the quantum aspects, the electrons would still continue to orbit around the nucleus, so they would be unaffected by temperature. And then number nine, as the temperature of a black body increases, the wavelength of light emitted by it does what? So this time we're going to use that the lambda maximum was equal to 0 .0029 divided by T. Remember that one? So as the temperature increases, the wavelength decreases. And that is it. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to be explaining where does the light come from. And so in order to do that, we're going to need to know about the atom. So I'll see you there. Bye.